My name's uh, John Barnes. I'm the technical manager here at EngineSoft UK, uh, and this is the um, fifth part of a series uh, looking at Mode Frontier and its uh, features and <coughs> functionalities. Um, this uh, time we're going to be looking at um, uh, optimization or how to steer your optimization in the smart way. So uh, we'll be looking at uh, some of the, uh, at least one of the algorithms, and in particular a pilot algorithm, uh, all part of a, a licensing package that comes uh, called OptimEasy inside Mode Frontier. Um, so what we're going to do today is, uh, if my screen goes on, uh, uh, is go through this uh, uh, agenda. I just want to give you a brief introduction to Mode Frontier. Um, some uh, introductory notes just on the algorithm pileops itself. Uh, we'll do a case study. We'll get Mode Frontier open and have a little look at uh, how uh, pileop works and some of the results that it can produce. Um, and we'll then do, do a, a live demo. Um, so let's just go straight into this. Um, first of all, Mode Frontier. Uh, is to do with integration and automation. It's also to do with a lot of other things, uh, optimization, exploration, uh, even collaboration now. So um, we, we typically start with integration and automation uh, before we get onto the optimization part. So we'll just take you through this. Um, we do this pretty much each time on the webinar now, uh, just to remind uh, people that if you have some design decisions to be made, some input, uh, variables and you want to tune those, uh, you'll plug those into a product or process. That could be a, a test bed somewhere, a CAE software, an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, you want to integrate those uh, together. They could be just one or two or I'll get them all talking to each other uh, and then really look at the performance of that product or process. Um, the way in which we typically work as engineers is that we control that um, system. Uh, we manually enter uh, the inputs and we look at the outputs. Um, and that is a kind of a, a manually integrated way that the person doing the integration is is the engineer. Um, what we're talking about with Mode Frontier is automation, placing some smart algorithms uh, in that loop to automate things. Uh, and that really has a huge advantage because it places the engineer uh, outside of that loop, that loop looking in and um, uh, looking at designs not one by one, but maybe tens or even thousands at a time, uh, and really beginning to look at the design space and actually see where you are uh, in the design space and whether you've reached your optimal solution or whether you can improve your design further. So that's integration and automation. Um, but once you've integrated and done the automation, those uh, algorithms um, are quite important of, of how you achieve that uh, solution. Um, uh, with Mode Frontier, we now have this licensing package called OptimEasy. Um, uh, and the reason for that is because it caters to a, Mode Frontier caters to a wide range of, of users. Um, it will run for basic or advanced uh, users. And uh, now inside Mode Frontier, um, some of the algorithms and a number of the, the features um, have been sort of rationalized into either a basic or advanced mode. Sometimes it might be a manual mode or an automated mode. Uh, and a lot of the, the great powerful things that uh, people have traditionally been able to do in Mode Frontier have been made more or, um, uh, quick to use either less button presses or provide less options and a lot of things are hand, handled automatically in the background and that really helps new users uh, really extract the benefit of uh, a huge powerful tool like Mode Frontier very quickly. Uh, so a new user can do a, a small workflow like this uh, with an OptimEasy uh, um, uh, license uh, but then there are other licenses when you start going on to much more advanced um, packages. Um, but as part of that OptimEasy package, um, uh, there's a licensing strategy that really uh, gives you the, the, the best optimizer possible, the, the most re robust one that is on offer with Mode Frontier called, called Pilot. Uh, and it really reduces uh, the number of options given to the, the user. Um, uh, so what is Pilot? Pilot itself is a proprietary algorithm uh, created by uh, the Asteco numerical team. Uh, it's uh, a one-click optimization experience. Uh, the whole purpose, as I said, is, is to um, uh, hopefully not confuse uh, the user. Um, technically, it, it combines two things, a, a global and local search, uh, amongst other things. So just to look at it in the first way, um, if you're looking at a design space, uh, as shown below, um, 
your response might be mountainous and you might be wanting to find uh, a region inside uh, that mountain range. Uh, you, you're looking for a single peak or a region that you're interested in, uh, but you haven't fine-tuned it right to the top or, of that peak or that location. And then you get typically other algorithms which are really good if you've got a much more simple um, uh, response that's really good at tic-tacking its way up to the to the top. Now what Pilop does is it can kind of uh, combine both of those search methods together very well. Um, if you're using other algorithms you might want to use one type of algorithm for one type of problem and another type of algorithm for the other uh, type of problem and depending on, on what you've selected you may have uh, not chosen the most appropriate method um, uh, and it may not have provide the best results. So if you had a problem that looks like a local solution and you started to use a global method, you might find that it would run slower to get to that um, solution and it might not find the most accurate uh, response. But so therefore, Pilot is a much more robust method, both in terms of time and ensuring that you get to your solution. Uh, it is also enhanced by uh, RSM-based evaluation, so training a number of surrogate models uh, after each generation to be able to uh, really get a boost in a, a speed um, <clears throat> uh, increase in what we're doing. Uh, okay. Other advantages are that uh, when you're operating a pileopt, and we'll show this in the demonstration, that there is only one parameter that you need to set. Um, which is just the number of evaluations that you want it to run for. Um, in this case, you also don't have to uh, start your optimization from a starting DOE. You can automatically generate this. Uh, and therefore, it's really appropriate for new users, but not just new users, uh, those who really have no prior knowledge about uh, their problem at all. So uh, if you knew that your response space was a slope, um, that you might decide that uh, you might want to use a gradient-based method just to go straight up that slope, and that might be the most efficient method. Uh, but if you really knew nothing about your, your problem, then uh, an algorithm like Pilot is uh, just a, a great way to, to start your, your process. Um, one other uh, note just about Pilopt is that Pilopt is getting better all the time. Um, there's been a huge amount of commitment from the developers to um, keep improving uh, the algorithm. Uh, there have been some recent updates. Um, it can handle a wider variety of engineering design problems. Um, so you can apply it to, to more problems than ever before. Um, it, it has been more uh, balanced and efficient in uh, using it, your computational resources. Um, it can now handle problems uh, better with uh, discrete variables or has more effective handling. Uh, and it uh, has been improved also for single objective problems. So um, may maybe the details of how it's been improved, but what you really need to take home is, is that there's, there's commitment uh, to, to make this uh, algorithm really work for you. Okay, so this is uh, just the, the example that I'm going to show you. It's, it's really not that important. Um, we, we used it in the last webinar. Uh, simply, it's a, a shape optimization of a silo, and there's a couple of uh, objectives and a constraint, uh, and there's a number of parameters uh, to vary the size and shape of this uh, silo. Um, but this isn't probably the most important thing for this demo. So uh, the most important thing is really to get to the um, a demo itself. Um, mode Frontier workflow, again, I won't go into the details of how to build this up. We did this uh, last time, um, but these two nodes are the important area this week, which is on the process uh, line. Uh, we have our design of experiments uh, and our strategy that we can set. Um, so if I just go into the um, uh, scheduler node, uh, just to be aware that obviously Mode Frontier has a, a wide range of algorithms that could be used. Um, and uh, the one in question here is the, is the pile opt algorithm. The big question for most people is, is which one uh, should we use? And there's always been this uh, optimization wizard that you can go into uh, and it can give you some uh, suggestion uh, about uh, which algorithm to use. If your design has runs for two minutes and uh, you got four hours, then you can run 120 designs and it will tell you that you could run a MOGA2 algorithm with a number of designs uh, as a DOE. And that's uh, very helpful, uh, but we can kind of bypass all that by saying, well, why don't we just use uh, this, uh, use Pilot uh, being the, the most advanced and robust algorithm that we have. 
Um, uh, but what I want to do is I want to run back to back and just do a comparison uh, to run a MOGA2 as the optimization wizard uh, suggested. Um, uh, run that for 120 des designs and then also run uh, pilot for 120 designs uh, and uh, really compare them and then see if we can actually run pilot with fewer designs and still get a, a, a better result. So um, but we'll do that and um, just also notice that uh, inside Mode Frontier and we also have this basic and expert so uh, again as I said before um, we're, we're trying to uh, make things um, more straightforward for the user. Uh, so simply fewer points if you're uh, a new user, if you really do then want to go into um, exploring um, the, the different parameters that you can tune, you can go into expert mode. Uh, but the good thing about pileops is that whether you're in basic or expert mode, there is only one uh, parameter, which is how many designs do, do you want to run? Um, when you select a, a pile opt and you click OK, you would notice that uh, the cross on the DOE node actually disappears because uh, pile opt itself will automatically generate its own DOE for you. So the user doesn't even have to think about that. But if you were to go to MOGA2 and certainly have it in manual mode, uh, you would then have to define a DOE, otherwise there'll be an error. So um, I'm not going to go and run these and uh, wait for the results to come back. Uh, I think we'll go straight to the design space to see what results have already been generated. And I've got a number of tables. I've ran uh, the optimization. So it's a optimization with two objectives. Um, and uh, let's first of all um, just have a, a look at the comparison uh, of the results. So if I was to click on my comparison table, um, Oops, and select um, min stress and min mass and put that against the ID. Uh, then I can plot all of the design points on the comparison table. Now this comparison table has uh, categories for um, the MOGA2 algorithm. There's some designs in here for pileops uh, with 80 designs and then pileops ran with uh, 120 designs. And they each have their own color. Now I believe if I click here and turn on uh, paint categories we'll get a color for each one of the categories so the the red one is the the MOGA2 algorithm uh, oranges are the pilot with 80 designs and uh, uh, pilot with 120 designs is the green um, <clears throat> I can also turn off the unfeasible designs uh, just so that we're left with uh, all those that have satisfied the constraints because we have um, this particular constraint on the um, deformation so this is all the these are all the feasible designs so first thing to notice is that um, uh, MOGA2 um, with 120 designs it's managed to uh, push the solution to uh, the Pareto front region down here um, but notice how it compares to the uh, other uh, three uh, optimizations maybe it's just uh, worthwhile um, plotting uh, the MOGA2 on its own. Maybe that's the clearer thing to do. So with MOGA2 on its own, with the feasible turned off, the unfeasible turned off, we can uh, look at the Pareto front, right click, mark the designs, uh, and we have one, two, three, four, five optimal points on that design because we're trying to get down to this utopian point down in the bottom left hand corner of minimizing the stress in the max. So this becomes our front. Now, when we overlay it, then suddenly we get these designs seem to um, dominate all the other designs. So that's the pilot with 120. Uh, with 120, um, really we're looking at like for like um, comparison between pilot to MOGA2. Okay, can we get a, a better solution with the same number of designs? And we can clearly see that there's many more points down here it's more populated than the, the red designs. Um, but then when we run the pilot with uh, 80 designs, then okay, we're giving pilot fewer points uh, to be able to hopefully get to this, this region. And we can see that with the orange designs, it has populated uh, the Pareto front region in, in this region, but it hasn't been as broad and as wide as the 120 because you wouldn't expect it to um, perform as well as one with more designs in it for, for the, the same algorithm but maybe the nice thing to do here is if I go and say mark um, all the Pareto designs is to then uh, create a table of all the points um, 
uh, that are on the Pareto front and see which algorithm they come from. So if I then go back to this table and then select those marked designs and then click create table, uh, I'll call it, I'll give it a name. Uh, we'll then be able to see uh, which designs are on that Pareto front. So notice first of all that there are only two MOGA2 um, uh, designs that are on that Pareto front. We have two, four, six from the, the 80 and then we have two, four, seven coming from the 120. So what we can really see from this is that given the same number of designs, um, Pilot can give a, a much more robust uh, and a better populated um, uh, Pareto front and push it uh, further uh, than using a traditional uh, methods such as MOGA2. Uh, and therefore that means that you can also use fewer designs to, to, to get to a, a similar uh, solution. So I think that's everything that I wanted to, to say in this uh, algorithm. Uh, hopefully that's been uh, clear enough. Uh, there is opportunity now for any questions if you have them. Um, please type those in. Uh, I'll just sort of go quiet for a minute or two and just wait for that. But uh, uh, please do uh, take advantage of, of this. Thank you.